Hi, I'm just here to chat today a little bit about some advice I've recently seen and some structures I've recently seen from other accountants. Um, so it's really important to look at the advice you're getting and make sure you get advice from an expert property accountant. So the first thing I thought I'd talk today, um, yeah, these are some issues I've seen over the last week or two. Um, and yeah, the first one's a real terrible one. It's your personal house in a company. Um, basically, this is just a complete no-no. You don't put your personal house in a company. Um, so what we're looking at from a, a tax point of view is either this person, if they're an employee, they're going to be liable um, for PAYE on the rent. Um, so say that the rent for the year is 30000 they're going to have to gross that up so it would become 45000 and then yeah there's about 15000 of PAYE in that so the 45000 less the 30 gives you the 15000 PAYE um, and yeah that's tax they're going to have to pay on that income on having their personal house in the company um, so yeah if they're an, deemed to be an employee so maybe they get a shareholder salary from the company um, then they'd have 15000 of tax to pay if their annual rent was 30000 the other option if they're not an employee is then there's a deemed dividend so that would just be the rent so there'd be a 30000 um, deemed dividend tax on that would be about 10000 a year so owning your personal house in a company, you're looking at, for a standard sort of rent, maybe about 30000 a year, you're looking at 10000 to 15000 of tax um, on that, just for having a really bad structure and not getting things right. So if you've got a personal house um, in a company, get it sorted now, get some advice, get it fixed. Um, the second one is something we talk about all the time, it's not doing chattels valuations. And the one I've seen recently is really bad, it's brand new house. Um, so they bought a brand new house a number of years ago, have it depreciated the chattels at all. Um, so there'd be at least 30,000 in chattels in a brand new house. Um, so that means they've lost out on probably 10,000 of tax. So to me, if you've got a brand new house that's a rental, get a chattels valuation done from Value It, um, depreciate all the carpets, curtains, dishwasher, stove, heat pumps, and there's a huge benefit, especially if it's new. If it's an older house, you can sort of get into that gray area. If it's really got no chattels, it might not be worth it. Um, but if it's new, it's got lots of chattels, then it's definitely worth getting a chattels valuation done. It costs about $500 through Value It. My third item is, your business in the same um, entity as a personal, sorry, as an, another asset. So in this case, there was a business and there was also a commercial property in the same entity, the same company. So what we're looking at is, say the business gets sued, it has a health and safety issue, and it's liable for hundreds of thousands of dollars, then you basically, rather than just that entity going into liquidation and going bust, it would then have to use the commercial property, um, and so any creditors would both get access to that commercial property. Um, another example is that just for unfortunate circumstances it went bust and it owes 500,000 to creditors, the creditors would then be able to access the commercial property. So never have your business in the same entity as something that owns asset, you never try and you try and never to mix your assets and your risk. You try and keep them separate. So you keep the risk of the business separate from assets like commercial property. And now a fourth thing to talk about today um, is a normal company. Um, in general, I hate normal companies. Everyone thinks, wow, it's taxed at 28%, that's awesome. It's 5% below the highest tax rate. Um, the problem with that is, though, it's just an interim tax, and long term, when you distribute out to trusts or out to individuals as shareholders, you tax at 33% anyway. But where we get into a lot of problems from rentals is how do we get the capital gains out? Say you have three rentals in a standard normal company. Um, you then sell one of them, you make a good capital gain of 300000 and you want to take that 300000 out and you want to pay off your personal house. Well, if it's a normal company, we can have issues that capital gains the companies, it's not yours. So often that's stuck within the company and we can't easily get it out. Um, we could look at liquidating the company, but you've got two other rentals in the company. So it makes it hard work. So that's a general thing why I don't like um, normal companies and I generally look at other structures instead but there's lots of different things to think about and yeah, there's not one set answer there's not one perfect structure for anyone but in general be, perf be careful of um, normal companies and consider how you're going to get your capital gains out thanks a lot